Okay, Siddharth Bhamre as well joins in from Angel Broking with his opinion on the market. Siddharth, hi, good morning. Uh, seems like around 7,500 we've hit a bit of a ceiling. Uh, where do you think market is likely to head post this resting time? Are we going to go back to 7,200 thereabouts or do you think we're going to make a dash higher? Good morning, Aisha. Uh, I won't refer to it as a ceiling. Uh, but, you know, uh, maybe it's a false ceiling, I would say, because uh, 7550, uh, 7500 has been, you know, a small sort of resistance. But data is not indicating that, you know, uh, that uh, one should uh, be very perturbed about this market, about uh, it correcting from uh, uh, current levels. What we have seen that, you know, FI's money is pouring in, uh, cash market they have been by, I don't know yesterday's figure, uh, influenced by Infosys deal or not. Uh, but then we have seen good amount of index futures, uh, long positions getting formed. Bit cause of concern, and I, sorry, not cause of concern, but you know, an observation I would say is that last two trading sessions, uh, there has been good amount of selling by FIS in stock futures, 1250 crores day before and yesterday around 600, 650 crores. So, so the tune of around 1900 to 2000 crores of uh, uh, selling, but mind you, it is not formation of fresh short positions, it is unwinding. Because when you go to the uh, your sheet, spreadsheet of uh, uh, where the change in open interest has happened, you will see stocks like uh, TCS, Infosys, uh, ICICI Bank, LNT, uh, all large cap stocks have shown unwinding. So maybe there is some sort of profit booking by FIS in stock futures, but in index futures we are not seeing that. And that's the reason you are seeing some breather in this market. So don't form short positions in an anticipation that, you know, 75.50 is ceiling and now market is going to correct. I think the immediate support for this market is very strong between 7350 and 7400. And I think we are just 60, 70 points away from those levels. So it doesn't call for forming a short position in this market. Mm, fair point. So let's discuss some stocks then, Siddharth. And I see you've got a buy call and idea. What makes you bullish on this one? So uh, we have been, you know, fairly optimistic in idea, even when market were falling, uh, you know, last series, uh, we had seen that the stock was quite resilient and, you know, took strong support around 100, 102 odd levels. Uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, formation of uh, long position in idea. Bharti is doing well. Uh, you know, Arcom being such a volatile stock has not been falling to uh, so much what it did in, you know, last series, despite market being uh, volatile of late. Uh, idea has been consolidating and we are expecting a breakout in between breakout did happen about you know 106 107 odd levels but stock did retrace back i'm expecting big move uh, in idea in uh, coming weeks and months but for time being i'm expecting it to go back to 114 115 odd levels one can fix stop loss around 102 and go long in this counter uh Parag, uh, you know, we've discussed this aspect uh, with you several times that you like uh, road construction names. Uh, you've liked them for a while now. Uh, what is the way forward for some of these road construction companies? Because that's one space which has been in an outperformance uh, groove and some of these stocks are no longer cheap now, Parag. Yeah, I completely agree that they're not very cheap because uh, when I started seeing KNR, it was at 90. Now it is... Uh, and at that time, it was trading at 7, 8 times. Now, it is trading at 15, 16 times. Uh, but, you know, the outlook has significantly improved. Uh, and that will actually play out in FI18 earnings. Because, see, right now, they are getting orders. Uh, execution will happen in FI18. So, uh, it is meaningless to uh, look at quarterly numbers right now for these companies. Uh, the, the way to look is that uh, the companies which are in right space, that is road EPC or, uh, say, uh, something like ITD cementation, which does uh, marine work, uh, or, you know, NCC, which is a diversified play. Uh, KNR and PNC, of course, are mainly road EPC players. And what I look forward for is that, you know, the balance sheet comfort. You know, if the debtor days are, you know, below 75, 80, which is the case in all these four companies, uh, you know, debt to equity is very comfortable. And uh, they have expanding order book. Imagine a company which does a top line of 900 crores, getting a 900 crore order on a single day. And that too... Uh, it, it is within their geography. Uh, so, for example, KNR gets order within his south region or PNC Infratech gets order in UP, uh, where it is very strong. So, they have the equipments over there. Uh, so, it becomes very... Uh, they can easily manage 13-14% margins also in these large orders. So, I think uh, earnings from FI18 will look very good for all these companies. And they are reasonably valued. Uh, if you see FI18 earnings, for example, uh, 
uh, ITD is valued at only 10 times FI18. Uh, KNR is right now valued at around uh, 12, 13 times FI18. So uh, PNC, Infratech, if you remove their uh, BOT business, and see all these four companies have taken a call that uh, now no more BOT. Uh, if, if at all, uh, some companies like PNC might do some hybrid annuity business, but uh, so BOT was something which was very causing a lot of concern because there you have, you know, traffic growth as a key monetable, then WPI was a key monetable. And, uh, you know, traffic growth has not picked up significantly uh, because of the sluggish growth. So uh, all these four companies have taken a call that they are not going to do BOT. Uh, in fact, ITD is a pure EPC company. KNR is almost a EPC company. So I think uh, all these four companies have great future ahead in my view. The other stock which is going to be in focus today is going to be Interglobe Aviation, considering they've accepted delivery of their first A bus, A320 Neo. Remember, uh, there was a bit of a hurdle in the delivery of this one from Boeing, and that got the stock a little bit in a sticky spot. Uh, but Sandeep, could this really come in as the much desired relief that the stock needs, or do you think it's going to all draw back to them not disclosing their Q2 earnings in the prospectus before the IPO. I think that's the bigger issue now because it became such a fancied stock. Mm. It got owned by so many retailers and a lot of people are stuck at higher levels. Now they need to deliver in terms of performance. So only after performance is seen in the numbers that I think investors will again get confidence, if at all, in this stock. So I think this is just a small news. I don't think it has any big impact on the stock price. Mm. Well, we are working with pretty flat set of global queues. And let me just uh, point out to our viewers that uh, it may be, it may be looking, looking quiet and calm, at least for global financial markets. But last night it was chaotic for European indices and for U.S. markets. Uh, the closing may be flat, but the underlying price action uh, last night was very, very unpredictable. And we'll put up uh, how some of the stocks moved and they reacted and they, uh, they managed to... Uh, um, you know, exhibit volatility from uh, from yesterday's high and low. That data point will just come up on your screen. There you go. That was the percentage move in Dow last night, followed by Europe, where the percentage move was very, very ugly. So my limited point here is that globally things are looking choppy. Look at DAX, look at CAC, and that is what worries me, that right now markets are nervous. Markets are nervous because, frankly, the central bank communication is slightly confusing. Everyone is uh, hoping uh, that uh, everyone is hoping that the Fed will not increase rates. But given the data point which has come out, uh, the U.S. unemployment data could be used as a benchmarking purposes for Fed to really do something differently. So watch out for central bank communication. That is the only story which matters. Uh, next, uh, next uh, four or five days, we are pitted against a lot of central bank policy action, and that will have a that will have a influence on the script of how Indian markets will move in the short term. Uh, Infosys. Yesterday corrected, and it was one of the biggest losers on the index. And Parag, Infosys, after that big mega block deal by the promoters, do you think in the short term, given the supply-demand equation, that stock has topped out? See, we are not very constructive on IT space as a whole, but within that, definitely Infosys remains the top pick uh, because of, uh, you know, uh, Q3 was very good and the outlook still remains very strong. Uh, but uh, within the IT, so uh, as I told you, uh, I have been more constructive on domestic piece or something like uh, power grid or banks and uh, of course SIPLA is a very safe stock at this price but uh, definitely less constructive on uh, IT as uh, at this point because overall opportunity size is not going to grow significantly that's the problem. Mm. Mm. Well, some of the energy names as well were actually holding out yesterday and one case in point of course was Ken and um, CK, I want to come to you for some of these energy names. Not ONGC, but Ken. That made a nice move yesterday. Does it look like uh, the traction is here to stay? Well, I think Ken uh, is the proxy play for uh, oil price movement, right? And with oil charging up from somewhere near $30 to $40, I think Kane followed suit, uh, maybe not a one-on-one -on -one relationship, but certainly Kane has been uh, having an upward bias. But that said, uh, when Kane came to this 140-145 region, it also runs into past supply zones and uh, that it has been finding it pretty difficult to negotiate past. 
Uh, I think uh, there is some consensus that even crude at about uh, somewhere in the region of 40 to 45 dollars would probably end its rally for now and uh, seek to congest for a while and not really bound upward. The new slow anyway is not right whether it is coming out of Kuwait or it's coming out of Saudi Arabia. Uh, so my sense is that the good times or the strong upward rally in Cain might be at an end and uh, there may not be too much money to be made by going long afresh in particular or remaining long on previous positions. So my suggestion would be to take some money off the table if you are a trader. For long term investors, Cain has still not put in that kind of pattern formation which uh, makes it uh, of attention for somebody to invest. So I think uh, it's in traders' purview only right now. Well, we will also be getting you a very interesting discussion later on in the show with Horma Sarabji, editor at Autocar India, with the battery of SUVs which are lined up to hit the market, analyze them all, which one to buy and which stock to buy also. Um, in the meantime, let's get set for the pre-open rates while the Singapore Nifty is indicating a very flat start and 7,500 at least in the near term is acting as a bit of a resistance. Let's see where the markets head from here, where the banks continue to profit take as was the case yesterday. Day. We will find out in just seconds from now. Well, 75.33, I'm going to give these rates a skip. These, uh, the Sensex rate definitely is looking a little bit more believable. An absolutely flat start. And that is something that the Singapore Nifty 2 seems to be suggesting. Having said that, we've started in and around that 7,500 level. So that's pretty okay. Lots of stocks which are going to be in focus. And a clutch of uh, PSU banks. Uh, Crystal has downgraded their ratings uh, of eight public sectors banks to now negative so look out for those Andhra Bank BOB Bank of India Canada Bank Central Bank Corporation Bank Dana as well as IDBI though most of it is already in the price but this is really a pilferage of the NPMS because this is now going to hit the mutual funds which have exposure to some of these banks United Spirits which is now planning to sell its properties now on fast tracks so trying to get rid of some of that dead burden United Spirits an absolutely quiet start for that one Crumpton Greaves they seem to be making the right moves consecutively and the consortium has win a contract for uh, an offshore wind farm now. Crompton starts off with a positive note, up by about almost 1% or so. Indigo, which has taken its delivery of the much uh, talked about and much resisted as well, Airbus A32, uh, A320 Neo, and let's see what that stock has kick-started as. Skipper, this is a small one, but this is going to be an important one to track considering the big order, which is one, which it's one, about 120 odd crore rupees for the size of Skipper. That's a big one from Power Grid, so look out for that as well. And Bharti, wherein BSNL is now in talks with Airtel for Spectrum sharing deal. This is an important news story to really track. But let's bring on board Ajay and talk about which, uh, what is the dealing room chatter this Friday morning, Ajay? Good morning, Aisha. Aisha, markets are still nervous about the way how global markets really absorb the commentary from Mario Draghi. So, not many brave buy calls coming in. In fact, out of the three, two are sell calls and one buy call. Uh, let's start with the sell calls. IDBI Bank, that particular stock ended at days low yesterday. Uh, fresh shorting was seen. In fact, the, the data shows that there was hardly any delivery, but fresh short buildup was very high. Watch out for that one. A lot of negative reports. In fact, uh, some of the analyst community say that the QIP and strategic stake sale plan actually may go in abeyance as well. So watch out for that one. Uh, Apart from that, Vedanta. In fact, the overnight data also shows that a lot of European stocks came under pressure because of metal rallies fizzling out and the Glencores and Valias of the world are actually reversing. So, uh, they believe that the stock which went from 40 to 90, the gains may reverse here as well. One buy call coming in, especially on a day when real estate bill has been cleared and a stock which is very high degree of corporate governance and practices is Godrej Properties. That is one stock dealers believe that with the passage of this bill, uh, companies like Godrej Properties will start getting more premium in their own sector uh, because of good practices. In fact, their, good, their, their new project called the Trees in Vikroli is also getting very strong response. The delivery-based buying is picking up in that particular stock going to dealers. Thanks a lot for that. Now let's go to Darshan. He's standing by with, uh, with uh, what uh, JP Morgan has to say on ICICI Bank. 
See, they are not uh, very positive on ICICI Bank, at least uh, for the short term. They've cut the target price to 260 from the earlier 300. And they're saying that the near-term challenges will persist for the bank. They're saying that uh, they've cut the estimates uh, for the next three years, mainly on account of front-loading of credit costs. Now, some of the sectors that they have lent to, steel and power, are still under stress, and they see that this stress will continue. They're saying that the asset quality headwinds will continue on ICICI Bank. And finally, they're saying that fee growth uh, uh, structure will remain muted given the fact that corporates are facing a lot of pressure. The other factor you have to watch out for ICICI Bank is yesterday most of the ADRs closed flat but ICICI was the one that took the big hit. It was down close to 3%. So probably should react negatively in trade today. Right. <clears throat> right, Ajay. Uh, Darshan, I beg your pardon. Thanks a lot for that. Uh, rupee is looking stable right now and that is again a big silver lining, so to speak, for us. At least there is no chaos in the world of currencies even though we can argue that what the ECB communi communication eventually means for the currency market. Parag, jump in on ICICI Bank. I can argue both ways. I can prove it on paper that ICICI Bank is the cheapest private banking stock and I can argue back and say that ICICI Bank still has a large exposure to power, real estate and infra. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Uh, that See, on one hand, they have uh, large value sitting in the subsidiaries also. Uh, both life insurance, general insurance, uh, AMC business, which is very good. Uh, and uh, on one hand, uh, definitely it's a strong bank with 40% and above CASA, uh, very good uh, cost to income ratio. Uh, so from longer term perspective, I think it is uh, it is a great buy. But uh, as I told, uh, you know, when it was quoting at around 180, 190, uh, I think that's a great price to be in. Uh, but after this rally and looking at the headwinds, uh, specifically in the March quarter itself, where they'll have to take uh, accelerated provisioning again uh, because of uh, RBI's AQR. So I think I would like to uh, buy it on dips and right now focus on something like Kotak, uh, where uh, they have very, very limited exposure to highly leveraged corporates, although it is very expensive. Uh, but in my view, uh, see, I look at this from this perspective that right now our total advances are around 70 lakh crores. Kotak on a consolidated basis, including ING and including their uh, uh, NBFC business, Kotak Prime, uh, total book is around 140,000 crore, which is just 2%. Now, uh, our credit growth is going to be easily 10 to 12% and it will only accelerate as the commodity prices move up. So, Kotak has to just gain 2% incremental market share to grow at more than 20%. And which is easily possible because most of the PSU banks, apart from SBI, BOB, uh, will have capital constraints to grow. So, you know, the, out of a total 70 lakh crore system, it is just 1 lakh 40 thousand crore. So, they have a huge opportunity to grow. They are sitting on 16% tier 1 uh, and with very, very low uh, NPAs. So, and once this ING integration is through, uh, because of which they took some hit uh, this year, next year it will be a clean, fresh bank. Uh, so, ready to, you know, uh, accelerate when economy actually moves up. So, I think uh, right now I'll be more comfortable there. Uh, but definitely ICICI Bank on a dip makes a lot of sense. Siddharth, what is your own sense of how banks are likely to pan out? Because post-budget you saw a big recovery come in in the entire PSU banking pack in particular. But roughly they seem to be, you know, in the bout of profit taking. Yeah, so you used the right word here, Aisha, profit taking and not formation of short positions. Uh, what we have observed that... Uh, Previously, before this budget, whenever there was bounce which was happening in PSU space that was happening because of uh, short covering and then again huge uh, pile up of short positions used to happen. Now we are not seeing those uh, positions getting piled up. Means I understand the arguments of you know some of the private banks uh, how they are looking uh, better. But uh, you know two main banks and which has a huge weightage in uh, bank nifty which is Axis Bank and ICICI Bank have rallied significantly, they, have, they are consolidating at this point of time. We are not seeing fresh short positions getting formed as of now. Concerns over NPA remain agreed, but uh, from a trading perspective, unless and until we don't see formation of short position, these stocks may not correct significantly. In fact, after some consolidation, I'm expecting ICICI Bank and Axis Bank to do better. Uh, we were biased towards PSU banks prior to budget. Now, after one week of significant rally, we are more biased towards uh, uh, private sector banks doing well, including some of the names where, you know, the stress quotient is high, like ICICI Bank. 
so uh, i would be more uh, inclined to have long positions in private sector banks and i'm expecting bank nifty first to reach probably 15700 800 odd levels which is not very far and probably we can reassess the situation then and take a fresh call okay uh, rupee is looking stable sjx is looking flat asian markets may be down but they are not completely out uh, even though we've seen a lot of nervousness, a lot of given back, a big swing last night, uh, at least in the European markets, that has not really translated into something very negative for Asian markets. What about real estate stocks? The logic says that uh, the, the, new, the tone of the real estate bill is more consumer friendly and this surely will have an impact on the real estate sector and the cash flows for some of the listed companies but none of the real estate stocks are completely down or out because markets knew this was coming and i think markets had smartly adjusted some of these stocks well ahead of the event uh, mitesh we discussed tata steel yesterday let's revisit that one because uh, tata steel for the moment looks like is in some kind of an outperformance mode Oh yes, I think very clearly, you know, most of these metal stocks and some of the names which had corrected way before the market went into decline, I think have gone into a stronger mode. Uh, Tata Steel to me, I think appears that it's a solid rally we should see head towards levels of around uh, uh, 315 or thereabouts. And then if you have a breather, I think eventually we'll look at higher levels, but I think around those levels there, there, there could be some profit booking and this rally might take a breather. Mm. Yeah, some of the other active participants in trade, and I just want to check in on Sun Pharma as well, considering they've made a class two recall of one of their tablets in the US, the reason for recall being failed impurities and degradation. So let's just check in on how the stock is performing right now. It's currently lower by about almost 1% or so. Uh, Mitesh, a quick call on Sun Pharma on the charts. Uh, see, Sun Pharma is mostly, you know, doing a range. I think it's not giving any kind of clear directional bias. Uh, but if we were to start getting past levels of around 885, 890, then I think there could be a trading breakout. Else, I think 840, 885 remains the short term range for the stock. Okay. Uh, CK, we've stopped discussing pharma officially. I mean, the only one I remember we discussed extens extensively a couple of days ago was Wokard. Mm -hmm. Pharma was something which we would discuss on a daily basis, on a regular basis, and every second question was targeted towards the pharma stock. CK is more into the granules kind of <laughs> stories nowadays. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, pharma has been waxing and waning on uh, in on on the markets. If you look at it from a near term perspective, uh, I think uh, very clearly if you look at them as a bunch, you take Cipla. I, I think perhaps with the exception of maybe uh, Ajanta Pharma, for example, which has actually pushed to a pretty decent level. I think most of the other stocks have been down and they have just rallied. That would include even things like Aurobindo Pharma or uh, let's say Dr. Reddy and uh, Divi's Lab, etc. So maybe the kind of gung-ho attitude which people had towards the pharma as a pack and looking at them as almost infallible in a rising market, that seems to have changed. And people are taking a more circumspect view. Uh, see, Cipla has a lot of takers from the fund side, but some of the market never wear Cipla very well, and there is always some kind of supply coming in. Now, where it comes from is largely irrelevant. The key point is that there is consistently supply. And uh, the news flow in Dr. Eddy has been there, but then it refuses to get up very much. I know it, it was 4,500, got knocked down to 27. And at 3,100, it's a bit of a struggle for it to go up. One drug uh, approval after the other. So there is a change, there is a shift in uh, the way people, the uh, more active players in the market are looking at pharma. So I think it's going to remain a trading sector and not really something which is going to be pursued very aggressively. Even stocks like, if you take from the mid cap, like let's say APLL, which is your Alembic Pharma, etc., which had such uh, fantastic results and uh, big, uh, let's say, milestone payments, etc. I think even those are under pressure and even those are not really moving up. It's only very, very straight counters like, uh, you know, small cap stocks, which are not so much well owned and where the momentum can be good. Those are the ones which are keeping the pharma flag flying. The big ones are all stalled. That is what it seems like. Okay. Uh and CK, what would be the top stock idea for the day? Just the name. HDFC is what I would run with. 1150, stop 1135, targeting 1175. Okay, HDFC and a buy call on that one. Mitesh, what about you? 
See, on the short term, I would choose a buy on UPL with a stop at 438 for target of 465. Siddharth, let me get a trading idea from you as well. Yeah, Nikunj, we have been negative on Infosys, so Infosys may continue to be under pressure. And one more stock which we are initiating short positions or we initiated yesterday is uh, Hindustan Petroleum. Oil prices are uh, going up, so sentimentally negative for this kind of uh, stocks. And uh, we are seeing fresh formation of short positions. The recent rally was purely, purely because of short covering. Haven't seen any formation of long. So some retracement from uh, higher levels uh, would happen in this stock. So trade with negative buyers for stop loss and target mentioned on your screen. Uh, gentlemen, stay with us. 60 seconds to go. Last trading day of the week. Frankly, uh, given the kind of global cues we are working with, we should not expect anything special. HGX is pointing to a 12-point recovery. Whereas Mario Draghi has not disappointed and he pretty much on expected lines has increased his commitment to monetary, uh, to more, more accommodative monetary policy and he's cut interest rates. What's making market men nervous, and that's my assessment, is that he's also not guided to a very sharpish rate cut and the sinking fear that uh, is are our central banks now running out of silver bullets? That is what I think is making market nervous. So far, there is no panic. There is only volatility. Having said that, for the local landscape, uh, for the local landscape, uh, now the next trigger would be the credit policy followed by earning season. Since they, they both the events and both the triggers are at least two to three weeks away, uh, in the short term, markets can really... Uh, move in a range but uh, clearly volatility is back and volatility is here to stay for the week we may edge out some gains we may close flat that's debatable but looks like we could be in for a very ordinary day of trade and it is an ordinary start nine points up for the for the nifty 36 points up for the sensex benchmark indices are not going anywhere but that should be this should be considered as a victory for the bulls because globally volatility is clearly back uh, Bank Nifty is also flat. The small cap index is not going anywhere. The mid cap index for the moment is also not going anywhere. Globally, banks could be on the receiving end. Uh, and globally, banks last night have sold off, but that's not having an impact on at least Indian banks. Uh, PNB, State Bank of India, ICICI Bank, Access Bank, HDFC Bank, all of them are absolutely flat. Reliance Industries. On Thursday, caved in. Infosys had that huge supply effect. The lines now seems to be stabilizing. Infosys has been in an outperformance mode. It's a flat start for Infosys. So I'm struggling to find a absolute mover, at least on benchmark indices. Marathi is the only one where I can see there is some constructive price action. But that's it, Aisha. Uh, frankly, this kind of a start is actually great news. Yeah, flat, no negativity really coming in this morning. But, you know, really, who knows how we actually pan out till the rest of the day. Sun Pharma, that's taking a knock of about 2%. Considering they've recalled some of the tablets in the U.S., I don't quite know what's the size or the revenue impact of this. But, yeah, they've uh, made a class 2 recall of uh, their sodium tablets in the United States. So, look out for this one. That's indeed the biggest drag on the index right now. ICICI Bank, Tata Steel, m and HL Technologies, SBI, Indusind Bank, BOB. These are some of the other lag ads. Reliance, which actually was a drag yesterday, that's the one which is at the top of the pack, about a 1% move coming in there. A BPCL, Asian Pains, Idea, which is something that Siddharth Bhamre was talking about and a bullish call there. ITC, Hindalco, ONGC, LNT, Tech Mahindra, they are, uh, they are your winners right now. So skirting around the 7,500 mark, it's pretty quiet across the broader markets as well. Let's check in what the liquid universe then is up to and whether there are any uh, movers there. Concor, that is uh, the top mover right now. That's holding up by about almost a percent and a half. ITC gets off to a smooth start. Coal India, Walk Hard, Vedanta. So largely the Nifty 50 names are the ones which are in leadership uh, position at least with the prize gainers within the FNO basket to start off the day. Just I'll well, losses continue, 1.7% lower there. DLF down 1.4%, Agrasim, Havels, these are your losers this morning. And you're seeing quite a significant OI gain to start off the day on DLF as well, which is a loser. Uh, DLF futures are down by about almost a percent and a half there. There seems to be a bit of a disparity or quite a bit of disparity actually within the cash or um, and the futures market when it comes to names like DLF. But yeah, nothing sort of start, no complaints really. 
but no big bang movie either mm. uh the market breadth is just about okay and uh, the market breadth is not caving in and that's actually great news so one is just getting a sense that today could be one of those days where you may move in a narrow uh, narrow range but within that narrow range you may see lot of volatility now what is keeping uh, uh, the nifty higher largely reliance to some extent in forces that's about it dlf is at 107 it's moving up on very strong volumes we saw we've seen constructive price action actually in hdfc of late and i want to revisit crompton reeves <coughs> which now stands at 151 rupees coal india the dividend factor has kicked in 324 rupees for coal india so uh okay i mean nothing large this is a pure consolidation no large fireworks on the upside no large fireworks on the downside too many stocks are not in news lot of globally and locally lot of attention now is really centered around what central bankers will do one central bank has indicated the next the next communication comes next week when we will hear it from the us fed theek hai a flat start and i would say a very boring start I think it's going to be called as a boring day as well. Uh, you're going to have mixed uh, situations, like you indicated, and uh, it's it's just going to churn. I think even in the large cap stocks, it's just going to churn because there doesn't seem to be any clear cut direction. So stray volatility here and there, and uh, maybe uh, it may be a better day to go off to the movies rather than participate in the market. Okay, Eminem Finance. That's his top story. So I finally found a buzzer there that's holding up by about almost two percent. Eminem Finance. It's currently looking good. Two thirty-three is where the stock is. Tried Zarka Lab is not bad, and well, Granules, a big mover uh, yesterday and today too. The traction on this one continues. A nice two percent bump up is what you're seeing on this one too. Concord, Divan Housing. These are the clutch of names which are holding out pretty okay. Um, So that I don't know how closely you track these two, but a Divan Housing and M and M Financials, would you have a, an opinion on both these? Yeah, I do uh, track them uh, quite closely. Uh, in fact, Divan Housing is showing a lot of strength. It has seen formation of long positions, but I think it is heading towards its strong resistance and looks unlikely to uh, breach it any time soon. Uh, which is around 190. Still, you know, for a momentum trader, it's a 10 bucks from current levels. Uh, so. Uh, Uh, they may, you know, continue to trade with positive bias. As far as M&M Financial is concerned, uh, even this stock has shown strength. It made uh, around, uh, you know, 240 uh, some resistance. Consolidating may not go below, you know, 220 mark. Probably at dips around 220, one can think of, you know, going long again here. We hear two, you know, after initial short covering, we have seen formation of long positions. So these two stocks uh, within. you know this nbfc space can uh, perform well good chatting with you let you go on that note let's also check in on what interglobe aviation is up Thank to you. now that the much delayed airbus uh, a320 new plane is uh, in their fleet so let's just see what that stock is up to and it's holding out 1.5% higher for interglobe aviation 819 is where that stock is right now dlf cottage properties hdil and other realty companies let's check in on those as well now that the realty bill has finally given uh, gotten to go through in